starting this project was collecting data. To find linear data, we started thinking about what types of statistics go up or down. We found that the most common independent variable for linear data is time. So we brainstormed things that increase or decrease over time. We came up with the results of Olympic races and events. After doing some research, the most linear data we found was the results of the men's 100 meter race at the Olympics over the years. To organize our data, we made a scatter plot using information we found on a table from online. Our independent variable that can be seen on the x-axis is time in years. This increases every four years starting at 1896. The dependent variable, or y, is time in seconds. This represents the number of seconds it took for the first place runner to finish the 100 meter race. Those times on the y-axis go up by 0.2 seconds. The symbols that look like lightning bolts are there to show that this graph's relationship to the origin isn't accurate. In reality, if we continued the graph, it would be much bigger and there'd be a zero right here. In a scatter plot, you plot the ordered pairs without connecting them with a the line. The purpose is to show roughly what pattern the data goes on. To find the line of best fit, we looked at the graph and sketched a line that went through several of the points. Two of the points it went through are 1972, 10.14, and 1976, 10.06. To find the equation for this line, we plugged the first point into point slope form, and we used these two points to find the slope, which we plugged in as well. This gave us the equation y minus 10.14 equals negative 0.02 times the quantity of x minus 1972. To make this easier to manage, we rearrange this into slope-intercept form. This left us with the equation y equals negative 0.02x plus 49.58. The first thing you want to do to find the linear regression is to add a calculator page. Hit control right parenthesis that way you can get your brackets set. The next thing you're going to want to do is to list all of your x values with commas in between them. The next thing you have to do is hit control variable to store it and you want to store that as D since it's your domain and you can press enter. The next thing you have to do is the exact same thing with your range on your Y values except you want to store that as R. Once you've done that, what you want to do is click menu and then go down to statistics, then select stat calculations and then select linear regression mx plus b. For your x list you want to enter d for domain and for your y list you want to list r for range. Click OK. Now you'll have some information about your linear regression including slope, y-intercept, along with the residual and the residual squared. You want your residual to be as close to the number 1 as possible. Taking these m and b values, we formed an equation in slope-intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b. With that, we got y equals negative 0.014328x plus 38.3245. In order for us to be able to draw this line by hand on our graph, we put in two x values that we knew, 1988 and 1900, and we plugged them each into the equation to find the corresponding y value. This way we can plot it on our graph using those two points. Now that we found these two points, we can connect them and see what our linear regression line looks like. To recap, this is the line of best fit that we drew, and this is its equation y equals negative 0.02x plus 49.58. And this is the linear regression that our calculator came up with. This equation is y equals negative 0.014328x plus 38.3245. We think the linear regression line best represents the men's 100 meter race results. So when we analyze the data, we will use that equation. We think that a reasonable domain would be 1896 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 2048. We said that because the first Olympics took place in 1896, and we think that the linear pattern will stay in place until about the 2048 Olympics, when we believe that humans' ability will begin to level out. We think that a reasonable range would be 9 seconds is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to 12 seconds. 12 seconds is the slowest time a runner has ran and still got first. 
We estimated that nine seconds is the fastest possible time people will ever be able to run 100 meters. To find the x-intercept, we plugged in zero for y and we got x equals 2674.8. The data we're using is at the Olympics, so we know it has to be a multiple of four. Therefore, our x-intercept is the 2676 Olympics. So this x-intercept of 2676 isn't really reasonable because we already figured out in our domain that the highest possible x value or year would be 2048. We believe that after 2048 the graph won't be linear anymore, but if it were to continue being linear, then the x-intercept would be 2674. However, we know that's unreasonable because it's impossible for humans to run 100 meters in 0 seconds. To find the y-intercept, we plugged in 0 for x and dot y equals 38.3245. So in year 0, that would mean it took humans about 38 seconds to run 100 meters. Again, we know this is a very unrealistic data point because the Olympics were not held in year zero as our range and domain already showed us. Olympics started in the year 1896, so there was never an Olympics where humans ran in year zero. As we see in our linear regression equation, our slope is negative 0.014328. This means that each year runners are shaving off about 0.015 seconds off the previous time. We made some predictions for future Olympics and what runners will get. We inserted X values and found the corresponding Y values. So we inserted 2020 for X here and for Y we found that it was 9.38194 seconds, about 9.4 seconds. And here we inserted 2032 for X and we found that the corresponding Y value was 9.21 seconds, so about 9.2 seconds. That means in 2020 we believe that the fastest 100 meter male runner will get about 9.4 seconds and the fastest runner in the 2032 Olympics we believe will get about 9.2 seconds. We hope you enjoyed our linear product video. Okay, bye.